Dolly and Mini friends. I'm so happy that you're here today. Thank you all so much to everyone who stopped by last time and watched my video about my pocket door and left a comment. You're all so nice to me. Thank you so much. I love you all so much. I I don't I don't think I could keep doing it without your encouragement, but I'm have I'm having so much fun. I didn't get a lot done, but I am going to show you the door pretty much complete and the wall in place. But I was surprised by two little pieces of mail that I received a couple of weeks ago um, that I wasn't expecting and I wanted to share those with you. My friend who had sent me all the bits and bobs, the huge box of beads and baubles and all kinds of things, that I've been using and she also had sent, there was a little cupy tobacco felt in there. Well, she sent me a little card in the mail with some things in it, including this adorable card. She makes these cards. I love this card. I absolutely love it. And she told me that while she was out, she found these cupy postcards and she sent me a couple I have never seen nor heard of these at all and I did not look up anything about them but the colors are phenomenal and they're definitely from Rose O'Neill's original illustrations. Cupies, Fun and Sun. I love the little Cupie riding the bumblebee and playing leapfrog. I just just love it and there is um there is the Rose O'Neill, there's her signature there. And here are the other sides here, but you can see where you would write your note. And it says place stamp here, but they're just in such amazing condition. I absolutely love these and I will probably frame them um, just to preserve them. I love them so much. And here's the other one. The Cupies sleeping. Oh, it's so cute. I just love Cupie. It's so cute. Isn't it just precious? So thank you so much to my friend. I really appreciate these and you know how much I do. And also in the envelope, she sent this whole article. I won't read it, but I'm just gonna show you the cute pictures. So she sent this article about this woman named Angel Witt, and the article is in Mary Jane's Farm from December, January, 2012. But she had this article and thought I would enjoy it. Um, I'll put a link to some of the information that's in this article if you, if you want. Angel's mother instilled in her a love for fixing up old dolls, and as an adult, she started her own doll hospital. And it's in Naperville, Illinois, and I just thought you might enjoy seeing the adorable photo. This is not a mini. This is not a mini. This is an actual place, but wouldn't that be a cute little room box? Yes, it would. I loved this little table, and it's so cute. But yeah, that would be a cute little mini. So thank you so much to my friend. I really appreciate you sending me these things. And then, boom, a couple days later, I got this little package in the mail, which I did not know about, from my friend and yours, Jolene at Tiny Keyhole Minis. Here, here is what was in the box. <clears throat> this is something very important to my dolls. This is Clara Barton's first Red Cross chapter house. If you don't know about Clara Barton, I highly encourage you to look her up. She is another strong woman of the United States. She was the founder of the first American Red Cross. This is a picture of that house in Dansville, New York, and the little picture to the left of it is a picture of Clara. 
She was actually a school teacher, but when the Civil War broke out, she found herself tending to wounded soldiers, just like Millie's great-grandmother. They were, in doll fact, friends. After the war, Clara traveled to Europe and learned of the Red Cross movement there, and ultimately she founded the American Red Cross about 1881 when she was 59 years old, and this is that first chapter house in New York. And she ran it for 23 years. She died in 1912 when she was 91, and I encourage you to look her up. So she was a doll friend of the Twizzleman family. And Jolene took this picture when she was on a visit there and she made a mini for me. Isn't it beautiful? So I haven't decided whether I'm going to hang it in the infirmary with some other photos I have of Red Cross and hospital things or for now, I think I'm going to hang it in the dormitory because I need to still clean up the infirmary. And then here is the other one she sent, which is the photo of Clara. And then just like I said, to the left of the house in this, in this photograph is this picture. And there is Clara there. And she was a very strong and determined, intelligent woman and leader. So I encourage you to learn more about her if you're interested. And she also sent me some more frames. She said she made these out of air dry clay and some molds, which she either made or has, I can't remember. Um, but I will have fun. Oh, I will the... need some pictures on the wall in the dormitory so thank you so much Jolene and to my other friend who wishes to remain anonymous um, let's go see how the dormitory wall turned out I feel like I didn't get a lot done this week but I actually spent a lot of time painting and cutting and measuring trims sanding prepping dry fitting, that type of thing. So I thought it was all pretty dull and that you wouldn't wanna watch me do that. So I'm giving you the, the quick version. So just sanding the walls, trying to get out some of the stains that I had on the walls before I painted them. I'm using this really great color. It's called Folk Art Roasted Pecan, or Pecan. How do you say it? Well, I woke from a deep sleep this morning with the realization that I'm going to need to put some kind of stop at the end of the door because if it opens all the way, it's going to fall through on the bottom when it slides off and then I won't be able to get it back on without a lot of manipulation. So I'm going to put, I think that's about as far as it will be able to go. Just modeling clay, it doesn't get hard. Well, we'll find out. It's not supposed to, it's not air dry clay or polymer clay or anything like that. Um, maybe, I won't need much of anything there. So maybe I'll just kind of put a piece of that right there. Well, now that that is settled, I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing all my trim pieces. This is um, really boring, so I'm just gonna speed through it or maybe even skip ahead. I could not find any more of the trim that I used for the parlor doors and I ended up buying this and I wasn't really happy with the way it was looking. It's just flat on the left side, which would be, you know, facing the outside of the room. And I don't know, I just wasn't really happy with it. So I started playing around with what else I might be able to do. I decided that what I would do is put 
two pieces together like that. I was actually really liked the way that looked. Unfortunately, that meant more work for me because I did not paint enough and I wasn't even sure I had enough, but I did. Remember when I had the bare wood showing on the dormitory wall and I couldn't fix it because I didn't make enough of my custom color? I don't have to worry about that this time because I'm using the folk art color and I did not do anything custom to it. So it was very easy to fix this. And I went and touched up some other areas as well. After I did all that work, I decided that I was not happy with the the raw umber color I painted the trims, that it was too harsh and too dark. And I wanted to warm it up a little bit, so I sanded it and I added some more of my antique wax. And I was actually really happy with the way that it looked. It gave it a little, it was just so flat. It gave it a little bit more depth and warmth and I was really happy with that. Gertrude, you need to go back onto the parlor table. I need to do some work here. While all the trims and walls are drying, I needed to do some work on the pipes for the bathtub. Uh, I needed to create a little area that's going to look as if it's built into the floor to keep these pipes organized because they just kept falling over. So I glued them to a piece of cardstock, which I painted with some zinc acrylic paint. And then I added these little tiny nail art pieces I had, which I've never actually used before. The cardstock was just from some packaging that I had. And I've glued that all together and now I need to age it a little bit. And the area where it goes into the bathtub, I wanna age that a little bit too. So I've just used super glue to glue it to the actual bathtub itself. And now I'm adding some silver paint and then I'll probably add some other colors too. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of copper and then maybe a little brown wash. There's the first part of the process there. You can see how that looks. I'm just using acrylics. I'm not using any fancy paint or anything. Now I'm just using some brown paint and water to do the area that's going to be near the floor. Here's how it looks and I've also added some copper paint and a little bit of brown wash on the back of the tub as well. Glue applied to both sides and clamped and waiting overnight for drying and cross fingers. Here's the dormitory wall installed and just like the parlor wall, it is removable. Um, it fits in there nice and tightly. I am going to put something at the bottom there between the rooms, you know, like a little step there. And here is the door. I did put soap on the top and bottom to aid in sliding. It's going to be used very little in my imagination <laughs> and in actuality. So I'm actually really happy that it even functions at all. It's a little crooked, my carving and my installation. It's definitely not perfect, but um, the dolls are happy to have something there and they're not too bothered by that. I'll show you the little piece of wood that I'm going to use for the little threshold area. I think it's called threshold. It still needs a little touch up, but that will give you an idea.
Moving over to the nursery, the wall is a little bit lighter to reflect the paper on the nursery side. I mix the same pecan paint with some gesso and I put that on. The door looks so much more crooked on this side, but it's just the way that I carved it. I wasn't as neat on that side. And then this is a little, I'm thinking of adding some built-in shelves um, along that wall. I've had that idea for a while, but that will be another project. And that is why I like to keep the wall removable. But overall, I am still happy with it. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed my uh, process here. And of course, I do need to add baseboards and things like that. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. And if you, I know a couple of you mentioned that you're thinking you might try it in your doll's house. I highly recommend it. And I'd love to know if you find a better way, which I'm sure you will. Now I can get started adding some more things to the dormitory and playing around with how I want it to be set up. So this is just preliminary. If you're new to my channel, there are lots of videos about my doll's house journey. I'm kind of creating this doll's house from scratch from a shelf that I have. And I'm just learning as I go. I'm pretty new. But I am so happy that you've all stopped by and I hope you will come back and visit me next time in the doll cupboard. Yes, it is crooked. When the Civil War broke out, okay.